Welcome back and thanks for stopping. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We don't have any animals uh, and what we're going to be doing is taping a house. To start with, what I'm mixing up here is called speed set. What this does is it fills in any gaps and cracks and the difference between the speed set, take a picture of this, and the difference between the speed set is it sets up in a different amount of time. There's five minute speed set, there's 20 minute, which is this one, there's 45, there's 90, uh, and so on. But it, but what it's designed to do is set up a lot faster than our regular mud. Um, and it's not so much based on drying out as it is on time where it gets hard um, and then you're able to recoat it right away. The primary area that we're going to be focusing on is where the two sheets of sheetrock come together, just like above the window here. Right at that seam, there's a solid uh, framing member behind there, and if we try and put tape right over top of that, it traps air behind there, and that air tries getting out, causes a bubble in our tape, and we don't want any bubbles. So that's where the pre-fill of the, the speed set, where it sets up hard, comes into play. And now in about 20 minutes, when this stuff gets hard, it'll be ready for the tape to go over that joint. So, we'll continue on. Some of the things to watch out for if you're hanging the sheetrock are things like this, where we end up with a great big gap. Um, we want to make sure that we get our sheetrock fairly snug, but not too tight, where we end up uh, feathering out the, the corner here, and I'll show you that here in a second. An example of that is right down here, where the sheetrock got too tight, uh, it got cut off just a little bit, and then the rasp uh, taking the edges off. But then they left the, the paper on there, which is very, which then if the tape is going to be going in the corner there, that's what it would be sticking to. So that doesn't work out so well. So we got to fix that. The other problem with this corner is right here where the sheetrock broke out and it got left. If that stays in there, that's never going to, never going to bond and it's always going to be a problem. So we have to cut that part out so that we can fill that in. These flat areas here, if we get a gap that's too big like this one, uh, where it's a good quarter, three-eighths of an inch, that's going to be too much for the tape to float across. So we need something solid back there for, for the tape to sit against. There's a couple more areas to look for is when the hangers are doing the roto zip, sometimes there's too much pressure on the bottom of the on the bottom of the sheetrock where the box is hitting and it actually blows the bottom part out. So we got to uh, fill that in. And then once that once our speed set dries, then we'll fill that cover that with tape so it doesn't crack again. Right down here is another example where the roto zip kind of got off of off of its track. So we're just going to kind of dimple the edges of that a little bit so that the sheet, oh, and then we've got some paper. So we got to take the paper off, make sure we're at a solid surface. We're going to fill that and then we'll cover that seam with tape uh, so that it doesn't crack in the future. 
So I'm just going to keep on going, make my way around the rooms, look for any seams or anything that needs a little bit of pre-fill for when we start taping, and hopefully we can get started taping uh, real soon. Here's another thing to be looking out for, is when you get all these little feathers that are sticking out here, um, that's typically due to a dull knife. The knife's not cutting the paper, it's actually just pushing through and it's ripping the paper from when you cut on the back side. Um, causes a lot of ha uh, hassles and it takes a lot longer for taping. So where there's a bulge right here, I'm not sure if there's something behind the sheetrock right here or if it was something prior to putting the sheetrock on, but with that bulge being in there, we actually have to cut that whole chunk out because uh, the sheetrock or the gypsum is all cracked up inside there. If you can see the, all the little cracks and the fragments here, that's right behind there. And if we try and tape over top of that, it's no good. Yep, and look at that. We've got a another screw or a nail, yep, another screw right behind there that was in there before the sheetrock was put on. I'm gonna put another screw in here. And then later on we'll come back with tape, cover that up so that we don't have any cracks that happen in the future. Okay, I think that's it for pre-fill uh, and the prep work, so I think we can get started getting ready to tape. There's a lot of different types of joint compound on the market. Uh, light blue has always worked good for me as far as workability, uh, the final product that we end up with, uh, so I've always stuck with it and haven't had a problem. So what I'm going to be using to apply the tape is called a bazooka and the brand of bazooka that I'm using is a, is a tape tech one. Um, it's one that I've always used and I'm comfortable with it. Um, there's a lot of different brands that are on the market that do essentially the exact same thing. I'm not sure if there is any difference between uh, the different types of bazookas. But how this works is um, with this pump here we're going to fill this whole tube up with drywall compound. And then the roll of tape is on the handle here and that goes up through here and it comes out the other end of the head. And as this is turning, 
there's a cable that is onto a plunger and it's pulling the mud so the mud is going to be behind here automatically as we roll this across the wall. Hang tight, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just one minute. So the first part in taping is we need to get these vertical ones that we just pre-filled. And the reason is, is because we're going to have an end up there and we want the end of the tape here, which is then going to be covered by this. So we want to make sure we get all of our ends covered as we're going around and taping. So we're going to start with the verticals and then we'll end up going on to our flats. Okay, so as we go, you can see there's mud coming out on the tape there and we're going to apply that down at the bottom and as the roller goes it's pulling that cable and it's applying the mud right behind the tape and as I pull this back there's a cutter I had up here that comes across and it's going to end up cutting the tape so then the tape ends up right there where you cut it Once the tape's applied, it has the mud behind there, then we have to wipe this down. So we have to get it really tight so that there's not very much mud behind the, the, between the tape and the drywall. And essentially what the mud is doing is it's, a, it's a bonding the tape to the drywall. So it's kind of like a glue and it's gluing it on there. Uh, the, the reason for the tape is behind there, the sheetrocker, that prefill is still going to crack but what's happening is this tape is going over the top so it's causing it's creating a bridge over that gap so whatever cracking haps, happens behind there uh, you aren't able to see or it doesn't transfer out to your finished product so let's wipe these down So what I'm going to do now is we're going to start doing the flats. We've got the vertical ones done. Uh, we want to cover up the ends of our tape like we talked about before. And what I do is the way I hold a bazooka is like this. So I'm going to be going from right to left going around the room. Um, and we should be able to cover pretty much everything.
Okay, and the last part is going to be putting the tape, applying the tape into the corner uh, right here. And that's going to be a 90 degree corner. And that's where this little roller here comes into play. Uh, what's going to happen is as I'm applying the tape, I'm going to push on this little doohickey here. And what that's going to do is as I push on that, that's going to allow this thing to come up and it's going to push and crease the tape into the corner. So here goes. And I'll show you how we press that into the corner uh, once we get the tape applied to the other three corners in this room. Now that the tape is applied into the corners, we have to press it into the corner and then we have to flatten the mud out that's behind there. So this tool here is a roller and it's got the rollers both directions here. And what that's going to do is it's going to press the tape tight into the sheetrock and it's going to uh, press the excess mud out from behind there uh, so that it's not all wavy. Then we're going to use what's called a skitter and this is just an angle box head and it's got little springs on there so it, I'm going to go like this so it's spring loaded as you can see so if there's inconsistencies in the in the corner it adjusts to that and then it's got these little carbide blades right here and right there and that's what's going to scrape the mud off and it's going to make it nice and flat against the sheetrock so I'll show you what we do with that when you're using the roller, you always want to start right in the middle here and kind of push the tape both directions. If we start right at the top and we try and go all the way down, it's going to be uh, much too excessive. So what we want to do is we're going to start in the middle, right about here where the middle tape line is. We're going to press the tape out and we're just going to lightly go up and then we're going to lightly come back down. So I haven't hardly put any pressure. But as you can see, it's making that nice 90 degree angle uh, right in the corner. So as I get that pressed in just a little bit more, I'll put a little bit more pressure on coming up and down. And you can see there's more mud coming out. But once I get to that newer spot that I haven't touched yet, then I'm going to go back to nice and light. I'm just going to go light and then do it nice and easy a couple of times. And then about the third or fourth time, I can put a pretty good amount of pressure on there to make sure the, mud, the tape is pressed tight against the sheet rod. So we'll go the opposite direction here. About one, two, and three. That looks good. Put that over there. And then when we get to the skitter head, what's going to happen is this is the leading point. So you want this little silver thing that's going to lead, the carbides are going to follow. This is just going to kind of, uh, it's going to ride into the, in the corner uh, real nice. It's just going to float and then these are going to trail. So we're going to start by going upwards and we're going to put a little bit of pressure on there. And this is just a one time pass. So we're going to put pressure tight, we're going to come up. And then it put, makes it nice and, nice and flat here, right where the tape is at. Uh, and it covers up the edges just enough and it fills it in really nice. So then we're going to flip it around, have that leading edge going down. We're going to be putting pressure with the, the head of this thing, uh, kind of at, a, at an angle going down. So as we're going, uh, it doesn't catch. Now at the tops and the bottoms, we have this little bit of excess mud that the skitter is not able to go all the way down and clean up. So what we have to do is on the top and bottom is we need to clean that up so that it doesn't cause any issues, it doesn't get in the way for when we end up doing the last coat where it fills it in and makes it look nice.
So we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Uh, we just have a few more things that we got to get done. One of those things is going to be the corner bead. And there's a lot of different types of corner bead you can get. This one is going to be a 90 degree angle. So if you look at that, that's a 90 degree angle there. And there's some of them that they're called a bull nose, and that's going to be like a rounded corner. There's chamfer corners where it goes at a 45 degree angle. Um, it all depends on consumer or the, the preference of the homeowner on what kind of corner bead you're going to put on. Um, so today we're doing the, the 90 degree and we're doing the paper face. So what this is all about, it's got the metal corner bead on the inside and then you've got the paper that goes beyond those edges and then it looks like this. So the paper is essentially being held onto the corner. So we're going to put a, a coat of mud on here, then we're going to put the corner, on, corner bead uh, in place like that. And then we're going to take this roller and we're going to roll those corners, we're going to roll that paper into the tape and essentially what it does is it bonds it to the sheetrock um, just like what, we're, what we did with the tape with the mud uh, behind the, the tape that's going to be holding it on there um, and if any cracks occur it's going to happen behind here where you don't see any of that. So there's a couple of ways to apply the mud onto the corner. One way is just the old-fashioned way. You've got a mud pan and a six inch trowel or whatever size trowel you want to use. You put a little bit on there and then you kind of wipe it on the corner, which we have to do that uh, on that corner behind me because the cabinets are going to be in the way um, of using the, uh, the other way. The other method is I've got an attachment for my angle box here and what that does is it just clips on right here, pops on there, and then as I'm putting, putting pressure, this thing will be all full of mud. As I'm putting pressure on here, it's actually going to be pushing mud through this opening. And then these little grooves here um, are going to make a nice, uh, nice row of mud, kind of like tiling or putting uh, tile down on the floor. Leaves the nice little ridges on there for when you put the, the, uh, put the corner bead on the corner. So the first one we're going to do, we're going to use the angle box here with this attachment. Um, as you can see, the mud is coming out of there and then it's going to be going through these grooves so that it leaves it right on the sheetrock. And I'll show you that after we get it put on there. You ready? And there we have the grooves. There's about the perfect amount of mud that's applied to there. And now when I put the, the corner on there, there isn't going to be a lot of mud sticking out past there. Sometimes when I do it by hand, um, I get a little bit more mud than I need to have on there and it gets a little bit splattery. But um, for this one, it looks good. And actually up at the top, I got to add a little bit more. Okay, then to apply this, we just push it in there, slide it up tight to the top, and then make sure it doesn't slide down on us here. And then what I like to do is we want to make sure that your roller, this roller here, uh, has wheels that's going to put pressure on the tape and it's actually going to press it really tight into there. If you look real close here, there's little pock marks or little holes, and some of that mud is able to come into that hole. So when we're pressing that in, uh, the mud is also getting impregnated into the tape, which is helping hold it nice and tight to the sheetrock. So as we're using this roller, we want to be at a, uh, we want to be perpendicular to the corner here. I don't know what degree that would be. We've got 90 there and I'm coming straight off of here. We don't want to be way off to one side or the other. We want it to be nice and square uh, so that it's coming nice and straight here and then going back again. So we'll get this wiped on here. putting a fair amount of pressure on there, making sure we squeeze out any of the excess mud, and at the same time, making sure the corner is on there at a nice and, nice and straight. So after we get the roller done, we've got the, this edge of mud here, so we need to 
Uh, we're going to start at the top here and get all that mud squeezed out from the edge. And just work our way down, clean it off real nice and neat, just like we did with the, the tape on the, on the flats. So what I'm aiming for is, if you can see right here, the blade of my trowel is pretty straight. And if I make a little shadow there, you can kind of see how there's a little bit of a gap going across there. So when we fill the corner with mud, and we want it to be as even as possible on both sides. So we want to check it there, and then also around the corner. As you're doing this, to make sure that we've got a, got a little bit of a gap there for the mud to fill over the, the edge of the tape. So as slick as that angle box is, and that attachment, um, there's applications where I can't quite get into a, a space and I need to do it by hand um, and just use the regular mud box and a trowel. These cabinets are a little bit too close to the corner. Um, I can't get the angle box in there, so which works out good because then I can show you the, the, way, the application for just putting it on with a couple of simple tools. And there you have it. Not too much different, um, just takes a little bit longer. It also didn't help that it was a two-piece corner. Um, but basically, same principle. We just want to make sure on both sides we have a little bit for when we trowel uh, that the mud's going to cover over this and blend nice and easy. So typically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my corner bead out by each of the corners that we're going to be doing. Um, and then I'm going to run around with this thing. I'll apply the mud on there quick and then come back with, the, uh, with my mud pan and roller and we'll start pressing it, the, the corner bead into the corners. Um, we've got a couple of closets that we've got to do also, which is just a little bit different, but it's the same principle. So stick with me and we'll get the corner beads going. Now in the closets, the way that you know if it's going to be a bifold door or a swinging door is that there's sheetrock. If there's sheetrock, we've got to put corner bead on the inside because the door trim will go on the outside. So what we have to do is we have to put our, our corner bead on the inside, which goes all the way up and around, which I pre-cut this corner bead already um, to go up in the inside here. And then I'll show you some things once we get the corner bead on that we got to be looking for. Uh, once we get the once we get it rolled and wiped down and all of that stuff So in the closet what you want to do is you're going to start on the headpiece here and we're going to put that right up there. Just get it stuck into place there. And then when we take our second piece or our side piece what we're going to do is we're going to stick that in there and we just want these corners to match up. We don't need it to go all the way past because this uh, the opening right here, show that opening. That little square right here, what we're going to do is fill a little bit of mud in there and then we're going to put a piece of tape going across there so we don't end up with that cracking behind there. 
So we'll get that all set up on both sides before we start rolling because we, when we roll, if we have to adjust it back and forth at all, we want to make sure that it's all in place and pressed so that it doesn't move once we get it set and everything is nice and flush. Okay, so what I've got now, I've got two little chunks of tape, one for each corner. Uh, and up in the corner here where that opening is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some mud that's a little bit, a little bit thicker, and I'm gonna press it into that little corner. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of extra mud on the surface. And we're gonna put that piece of tape right here, coming out to the corner. And when you're done, it should look something like that. And I know it's on the inside of the closet, and I've seen a lot of guys where they just mud over top of that, and it's good enough, nobody will ever see it again. That's true. But in this case, uh, I wanna make sure everything is done right. Um, so we're adding the, adding the little extras just to, just to be safe. So one of the last things we have to do is we have to cover all of these screws, which in the industry they call spotting screws. We gotta put mud over all of our screws so that it ends up looking like this. It fills them in so when we sand and paint, we don't see where the screws are at. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of mud on my trowel, just like that. And when I do that, I'm gonna press against the mud pan just a little bit and then scoop it up so there's a little bit of a roll. And what I wanna do is I wanna put pressure with my thumb on the sheetrock first, and that's gonna start it. And as I go up, I'm just gonna roll the trowel on the top tighter to the sheetrock, and then I'm done at the top. And then you wipe that back down, and what essentially what you're doing is you're filling the, the screw hole on the upstroke, and then when you bring it back down, you're filling the opposite direction, so you kind of get a nice flat surface. The problem is, a lot of times you get like on this top screw right here, you can see the black part of the screw coming through. So what we've got to do is we're going to turn that in about another quarter of a turn. And this bottom one here, I can see a little bit of black, so I'm going to turn that just a little bit as well. And then we're just going to reapply, starting at the bottom, going up, and then coming back down. So then there's other spots where we end up missing, uh, the hangers end up missing a whole bunch of different spots. And if we go through and we just cover that up with our mud, it might be okay, but there's a lot of spots around there that we need to dimple in so that we don't end up seeing that after we paint. You know, and I've always heard that uh, if you miss four times, the fifth time is the charm. So each one of these spots, we got to sit and turn that in, and the screw's not quite in far enough. So we got to turn that in, and we might as well get these while we're at it. I guess the seventh time was the charm on that one. There we go, and nobody will be the wiser. Golly. <laughs> oh. I'll just do this here quick. Mm -hmm. 